Good day, students. This is Afia Demola Johnson, your biology teacher. I will be teaching SS2 students biology. And the topic before me here is classification of plants. As you have learned in your SS1 class last, I mean, in the previous term, you were told that classification is the act of putting together organisms that have similar features and putting them apart from organisms with different features from theirs. Today we want to talk about, we want to uh, streamline our topic to the classification in plants. Now, I want to say here that uh, plants are classified plants are classified based on two headings on two headings number one is botanical classification botanical classification then we have agricultural classification So let's take them one after the other. Let's talk about botanical classification. Botanical. When we're talking about botanical classification, we want to talk about a method of classification as stipulated by botanists, people that study plants. Now, based on this, we are meant to know that plants are botanically classified uh, into the following three divisions. You know, then, when you did classification in SS1, you were told that there was a man called Carolus Linnaeus. Carolus Linnaeus did three work in classification, and one of the things he did was to establish seven hierarchy of classification. And in zoology, these seven hierarchy include the kingdom, the phylum, the class, the order, family, genus and species. But in both in both me, we have the kingdom, division, class, order, family, genus and species. So what is representing phylum in both me is what is division. And in both me, we have three divisions of plants. The first one is division talophyta. Division talophyta. Division talophyta. The second one is division bryophyta. And the third one is division tracheophyta. So let's take the first one division talophyta. Division talophyta. Now, when we're talking about this division talophyta, we are talking about plants that are non-vascular. These are non-vascular plants. These are non-vascular plants. Now, what do we mean by saying they are non-vascular? We mean that they do not have conducting tissue such as the xylem and the phloem tissue that is present in the division tracheophyta. So does division bryophyta. Bryophyta are also non-vascular. 
And as time goes by, I will tell you that talophyta and bryophyta, which are non-vascular plants, they are categorized under a subgroup called the cryptogams. Why the tracheophyta that is vascular, they are called phanerogams. No, they are not vascular. They don't have conducting tissues. Like I said, the xylem tissue, which would have been used to draw water and soil nutrient from the ground, but they don't have it. Then the phloem tissue that they can be they would have been used, used to do what? To bring about translocation of food, that is, distribution of food that is produced by photosynthesis from the site of photosynthesis to every other part of the body of the plant where the food is being used up. They don't have these two conducting tissues. So, and another thing about them is that they are not established on land because they don't have conducting tissues. They are not established on land. They where are they now established? They are established on water body because they don't, I didn't think they are established on land. Then they will be faced with the difficulty of how to draw water from the ground and to draw nutrients from the ground. And because they, they don't have conducting tissue, they are established on water body so that their body will be submerged in water and the water they need and the nutrients would, uh, would just come from the water and enter their body. So they are not established on land. But rather, but rather, they are established on water body. Now, let me tell you one thing here, very important. In the olden days, if you read old editions of biology textbooks, they will tell you that division talophyta is made up of two groups of organisms the fungi and the algae. Now, that was when the fungi was found to be plants. But in the, in the latest discovery, fungi are no longer plants based on two reasons. Now, I am going to state it here. Now, earlier on, earlier on, the division Talophyta was said to contain fungi and algae. But recently, because of the following two reasons. Fungi were separated, separated from plant kingdom as kingdom fungi. So they now occupy their own kingdom called kingdom fungi. What are the two reasons? Now, the two reasons for the separation are number one, fungal cells. Fungal cells have chitinous cell wall rather than rather than cellulose cell wall in plants, plant cells. Now, plant cells have, they have cell wall made of cellulose. But in the case of chitin, in the case of fungi, their own cell wall is made up of chitin. That is cellulose that, is, that has a nit nitrogen atom in it. That is N acetyl, uh, poly D N acetyl glucosamine in beta 1 to 4 linkage. But 
In plants, you have their cell wall is made up of what? Cellulose. So, now, another reason is that fungi, fungi lack chloroplasts. Unlike plants, fungi lack chloroplasts, but plants have chloroplasts. They can carry out photosynthesis, but fungi, because they don't have chloroplasts, they do not carry out photosynthesis. Me, I want to tell you, I want to make a correction here. I said there are two reasons. No, there are three reasons. I want to add one to it. There are three reasons for the separation. So now I said here, yeah, huh? okay, so there are three reasons. Three reasons. Sorry for that. Now, the third reason for separating fungi into a separate kingdom is that now fungi fungi store carbohydrates they store carbohydrates as glycogen unlike plant cells unlike plants that store carbohydrates As starch. They store carbohydrate as glycogen just like animals. But plants store carbohydrate as starch. These are the three reasons recently fungi are no longer said to be part of plant kingdom. Now, but nevertheless, we are still going to spend some time on the fungi. We are going to spend some time on fungi. So I want to tell you that Fungi, let's give common examples. Common examples of fungi are number one, we have the mold. Mold, e.g., rhizopus. Rhizopus nigrican. Where can you find that one? You can find this one on rotting bread. We call it bread mold. When bread is, is spoiled, those black particles you have on the body of bread and eba, they are mold, they are rhizopus nigrican. Another one is penicillin notaton. Penicillin notaton. This one, if you see uh, the cob of, uh, of, uh, uh, of maize, those pinkish particles you used to see when the cob is thrown away for some time, you see some pinkish particles on the body. That is penicillin notaton. Then you see I have another one called agaricus species. Agaricus. Then apart from that, you have your mushroom. You have seen mushroom, that thing that looks like umbrella that grows on, on a rotting wood. You have mushroom. You have puff ball, puff ball, you have toadstool, toadstool, you have bracket fungi. All these are examples of fungi. So in the next class, we are going to look at the anatomy of fungi, the basic structure of fungi. So I hope you understand what we have been talking about. All this why. So, in the next class, we'll continue from the structure, some other things you need to know about fungi. I hope you understand and you enjoy the class. I remember my humble self, Afia Demola Josie. God bless you and bye for now.